Welcome to another video tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use effects in your games. So we'll start by taking a look at the effect editor and I'll explain how the options work in the effects editor and what you can do with, with that. And then we'll take a look at then how to use those effects once you've created them, either by attaching them onto objects or tiles or adding them and scripting them in your games so that they uh, can appear at different parts of your game. So let's start with taking a look at the effect editor and explaining a little bit about how effects work inside RPG in a box. So first of all, you'll find the effect editor along the top in the tabs section here. You want to find the effect editor and once you're in the effect editor, you want to click new to create a new effect. And the type is going to be effect, obviously. And then you would give your effect a name and uh, you give it, give it a suitable name for the effect that you're trying to create. What you'll also notice is, is that there's a preset option. And if we drop that down, you can see that there's five presets that you can use straight out of the box. So if you wanted to create a fire, for example, then you could just click flame and it would be set up for you basically. And then if you wanted to use it as it is, you can just do so. But you can also make changes and customize uh, the flame in this case to look and work the way you want it to. So you have flame, fountain, portal, rain and snow. These are the preset effects and more may be added over time. So if your list when you're watching this has more in it then that's because they were added at a later date as of filming this video so for the purposes of uh just demonstrating the effect at a time i'm going to select the fountain preset because as you'll see at the moment uh i am actually going to use a fountain so we'll use uh the fountain as our preset and i'm not going to deviate too much with the name either i'm just going to call it fountain and be original but obviously you can call it whatever you want and then you're going to click OK now if you're using a preset like in this case the fountain you should already be met with the effect playing in the uh, effect editor okay and we can zoom out with the mouse wheel if we hold down the uh, right mouse button we can rotate around those are our sort of controls for viewing the the part the the effect so if we go to effect properties these are all the effects these are all the properties that will uh, impact how the effect looks and behaves so i'm going to uh, make an admission up front that i don't know what all of these mean or do so what i will say and this is pretty much how i've gone about with the effect editor is just play around with the options. I mean, we will do that in this video anyway. I'll, I'll make a change to each one so that you can see what it does. And the ones that I do know how they work, I will explain them. So if you want to know how, know what some of these mean and what it, what impact they will have, I can explain quite a few of them. But obviously, there will be some that uh, if I don't mention them, it's not because I've missed them. It's because I don't actually know so I'm not going to give any information on the ones that I don't know. But as I say, the best thing to do when it comes to learning things like the, the effect editor is just create yourself a um, mess around effects and just make changes and just see what each of these options does to the particles. And uh, you'll come up with something that you'll start to learn what the, what the uh, settings do. And then you'll start to... Um, tailor them to, to fit the type of effect that you're looking for. So we're going to actually create four effects in this video. We're going to create a fountain, we're going to create a fire, we're going to create smoke, and we're going to create rain. Now, three of those are already presets, but I will be making changes to most of them, and I'll be talking you through the changes that I make. But before we get to any of the actual ones we're going to use properly in this video, Let's go through these um, options in the effect editor so you can start to understand a little bit about how the effect editor works and how effects work. 
So, first thing I need to explain is there's two things you need to understand for uh, effects to work inside RPG in a box, or in general for most of these types of things. There's two parts. You have something called an emitter, and then you have some things called particles. Okay, let's start with particles. These are the things you can see, the blue and white uh, spheres that you can see that make up our fountain. Those are called particles. They are basically uh, lots of different objects being created that have physics and movement applied to them en masse, and they move about doing whatever it is based on the settings that you set up here. So particle amount, for example, that will change the amount of water coming out in our fountain, okay? So particles are the visual aspect of your effect. The emitter is where the particles come from. So think of it, in, if, if this was um, the water, if the particles was the, was the water coming out of a hose, then the emitter would be the nozzle on the hose. So it's where the water, in this case, would come out from. If it was a fountain, then it would be the spout of the fountain. So if you don't have an emitter, then no particles get created. And if you don't have any particles, then you don't have a visual effect. So for effects to work, you need an emitter, and the emitter needs to emit particles, and then that's how you get your effect. So with that in mind, the first option here, emitting, controls the emitter, okay? Now, you can't see the emitter in the effect editor because it's invisible, okay? But it's essentially here, okay? Because it's, it's where the, the very starting point of your, of where the sort of particles come from, that's where the emitter the emitter is. So at the moment, the emitter is right here, just on this sort of cross section between this, these four squares here, just in the center point there. If we turn this off, then you can see that the fountain turns off. And if we turn it on, then the fountain turns on. So it's literally like turning on and off a fountain or turning on and off the hose. So if you turn your hose off, then the water stops. If you turn your hose on, the water comes on. So that's the that's the emitting function. Basically controls whether your particle effect is basically playing or not. When would you use this? You would use this if you want to later turn an effect on via a script. Because there are, and we'll get to this when we get to using the effects later on in the video, but you'll see there's a couple of scripting functions that you can use called enable effect and disable effect. Those basically turn on and off this button via script. So if you wanted to have the fountain start off, then you could add this effect at the beginning of the game, but with this off, so you don't see the fountain, and then later on when you enable the effect, it will in essence turn this on, and you can see that the fountain will turn on. Likewise, if you wanted to disable effect, then it would turn that off later on in your game, and you could turn it off that way. So having this on or off in the effect editor uh, is just how do you want this to start when you add it? Do you want it to start on or do you want it to start off? So if you add an effect and you're wondering why you can't see it, it's probably because this is off. So make sure you have it on if you want it on by default when you attach an effect, okay? Next we have one shot, okay? If I turn the, the fountain off for a second and I turn one shot on, look what happens when I turn the emitter back on again. Notice how the fountain didn't loop. This is basically like, um, if you think about like an audio file, if you say loop, then it just loops over and over and over and over again. Whereas one shot would be play it once and then, you know, that's it. So that's what one shot does. It play, it basically, um, let's turn the fountain off again. It basically, uh, in this case, we've set it to uh, throw out a thousand particles. Okay, if I set this to one, okay, and I turn the one shot on, and then I turn the emitter on, we get one little solitary particle goes flying out, and then that's it, okay? That's because the one shot is going to fire out one particle once, okay? But if we didn't have that on, then it's going to keep throwing out one particle over and over and over again. So one shot is good for like explosions, 
blood impact, you know, if there were bullet bullet hole, that kind of thing. And if anything that should just play once and then that's it, that's what you would use a one shot effect for. So let's put this to let's say a hundred and put one shot on, put the emitter on, you can see that just plays once. So this could be like a spark in an electrical outlet, you know, in a spaceship or something, you get a brief spark. If we were to colour these a bit more yellow, then you could imagine that being like a spark, perhaps. So next we have, um, as I say, I'm going to skip over the ones that I don't 100% know what they mean or do. I've noticed negligible difference with them, so it's difficult for me to actually explain what they do. So now let's go down to speed scale, okay? This is basically the speed at which the particles uh, move a bit thrown out of the emitter. So it has an impact in the sense that it's how fast your animation or effect in this case plays. So I'm going to put this to something like 0.4, maybe 0.5, something like that. Maybe not quite as slow as that. That's more like a lava lamp type thing. So maybe 0.6. Something like that. You can see that it starts to have an effect on um, the speed at which the overall effect is playing because it's the speed at which the particles are moving out of the emitter. Okay. Explosiveness is the... I'm not 100% sure how to word this, but if I show you what it does, if we put a little bit of explosiveness on... You can see it does it in sort of bursts. So it bursts out and then has a pause and then... Um, yeah, I'm not sure the best way to explain it, but you can see what it does, yeah? And obviously you can put little amounts in, so if we just wanted a small amount, then it's almost like uh, you get a bit of fountain and then a pause and then a little bit more fountain. So this could be useful for smoke, for example, because smoke, you could have like 0.9 or something where it's sort of... something's you know, like a train or something is puffing out smoke intermittently. Obviously, it's still got a lot of gravity, which is why it would look odd for smoke, but just you can see the effect it's having already on the fountain. Yeah. Let's put this back to zero, and now we get our fountain back. Particle amount I've already covered, but obviously if we add another zero, then that's going to increase the amount of particles and put a bit of a hit on your... Uh, CPU, obviously 100 will reduce it. So this is just the amount of um, particles, in this case, that are being thrown out of the emitter. So 1,000 is a good amount for our fountain, so that's good. Lifetime. Lifetime is how long that particle exists for. So if I put this to point 0.1, then it's it's almost like a uh, gas stove. It's it it's the particles are basically being thrown out, but then almost dying immediately. So it kind of gives the effect of like an intense. In this case, it looks like an intense heat that's coming out of something like steam, like a real intense um, steam effect. If we put it to one, then the particles will fall a bit more because they're lasting a bit longer. Um, before they die out. So, yeah, lifetime is basically how long the particles, once they've been thrown out of the emitter, how long they are visible for over the course of, you know, their sort of lifetime, as it were, from being in existence. So the, the higher this number, the more um, time you see the particle. So in this case, the effect it has on the fountain is that the, you see more of the droplets as they fall down, as opposed to when it was 0.7 or whatever it was before, they were dying off on the grid, almost. Which means if, if you had a, a shallow fountain, like if this was the ground, then that kind of makes sense. But if your fountain was on top of a tower, then you actually might want the water to fall down a bit more as well. So, again, you can mess with the lifetime to create a longer-lasting particle. Okay, I'm going to put it back to 0.7 just for the moment. Then we have the emission shape. So... I mentioned at the beginning how you have an emitter and you have particles and the emitter is the thing that spews out the particles. Now the moment the emitter shape is set to a point and that's what's giving us the fountain effect because the 
it's all of the particles are being thrown out of a single point and then they're sort of moving off in a sort of um, triangular shape and then sort of, you know, going up and then coming down like a fountain, okay? But if we change the shape to a sphere, then all of a sudden it looks like a, it's, it, it looks like it's sort of the particles are initially shaped like a sphere before being sort of thrown out into the shape that gets made by the particle effect, by the, you know, the gravity and everything. And if we change this to cube, it will be a box. Then it will now take a more box-like shape. Okay. So this isn't the shape of the actual visible particles. This is the shape of the, the emitter. So if we change the box size, for example, to make it, let's say, 500 by 500, then you can see that we've got a much bigger uh, particle effect because the emitter is now like over quadruple the size. So this could be useful for fog or rain or something where you want a much larger volume of particles to cover a wider area. Now you've made your emitter a much bigger size. Whereas point doesn't have those settings because point is always going to be a tiny point. That's the whole, literally the whole point of it is it's, it's all the particles are coming out of a single point, okay? Sphere, you can obviously do the radius with the single width. So if we made this 60, then we make that sphere bigger. Has the same effect as the box, except it's just a sphere. So it's all around you, both below and above and all of that. And then a uh, box, as I say, you can go in X, Y, and Z locations in dimensions. Yep. So that's, that's the emission shape. I think that's pretty clear. Then we have the particle shape. This is the one that actually affects how your um, effect looks. So we can have cube, and now our fountain is going to look a bit more cubical, or cubic, whichever you <laughs> want to call it. It looks more re um, angular. We've got sphere, which is what it was before, and now they look like little round balls. And then we have billboard. And then billboard, you would have any images, like I've got shuriken, then it will use that image, okay? And uh, it's difficult to see with shuriken because it, you can see they're little crosses because that's what my shuriken, so you can see it's a little cross. If I was to, just for the purposes of messing around, if I was to create another image, let's make a bigger image as well, just called test. And let's just put big yellow, orange question mark. Something like that. Say OK. OK. And then we save that. Now you can see that you get a whole load of question marks. So if you want um, to use images as your particle effect, then you set it to billboard. And then it will, and then set the image that you want, and it will throw out a whole load of those. Okay, and you can set the size of your billboard here. So I'm not sure what the maximum of this is, but let's just make it a bit bigger. And obviously, we'd probably want to cut down the amount. There you go. So you cut. So you can have someone that's really puzzled in this moment. You know, play an effect of lots of question marks flying around someone's head. You know, you can have a lot of fun with these types of things. So. Uh, there you go. So that's that. We now go back to sphere. Put this back to a thousand. Let's halve our particle size. So now it looks a little bit more like water. Just by making the spheres just a little bit smaller, we've now um, made it look a little bit more like what I'm going for. Then you have the start color and the end color. And this again relates to the lifetime of a particle. Remember how particles exist for a period of time, in this case 0.7 seconds, and then, they, then they're then they sort of wiped from existence. The older particles, the ones that are nearing the end of their life, you'll see that they are darker blue than the ones that are being, that are being born, if you will. The ones that are being born at the very start of the emitter, they are like a white, okay? So these two colors, the start and the end color, 
they relate to the, the birth and the death color of the particles. So if we wanted um, the water to be vibrant blue when it's born, then we'd click this and we'd set it to a vibrant blue. Let's do the opacity as well. And now it starts a vibrant blue right at the beginning of the life cycle. And then let's say we wanted them to go gray, really dark gray at the end of their life cycle. Obviously it's difficult to see at that point because it's already against a black background, but we could do something like green maybe. Yeah, so you can start to see uh, how that's sort of playing out. So they start one color and then over the course of their life, as they get older, they start to turn green. And the older they are, the more green they become. So in this case, let's put it back to a sort of pale blue for the beginning. And then we'll have a sort of a more rich blue at the end. Something like that. So there's our color. And then we have start scale and end scale. And this is uh, in, you have to remember that this, these two numbers here are also used in conjunction with the size of your particles. Okay. So this is 0.5 of 0.5. Okay. So if we put this to one, then at the end of their lifespan, they are 0.5 in size, okay? Because it's basically full size, and this is the size, okay? So, and they start at half the size. So we could flip that, for example. So they start big, but then go really small at the end. Yeah. Then we have direction, and this is actually what affects the motion of your um, particle effect. So in this case, it's going up. So X and Y are zero. Z is the one that we're interested in because a fountain goes up and comes down. So it's all to do with um, the upward motion. If we make that zero, then it's, it doesn't have any um, uh, upward force at all. So it's sort of spewing out more to the sides. In this case, the fountain, we definitely want one because we want it going up. But if we, if we um, made that zero, but then put a one on the Y, then you see how it moves in a different direction. So this could be, for example, a hose. So it would be fl laying flat rather than a fountain, which is going up. And then gravity, as you've already seen, affects the motion of your particles. So if we put less gravity in, um, let's do minus five, you can see that it affects how much the water then comes back down after it's been thrown out of the emitter. So minus 10 gives us our fountain. If we put it to zero, it's just going to go up and never come back down because there's no gravity, right? Um, if we did minus 50, then our fountain is really small because there's a lot of gravity that's pushing the particles down almost the moment they come out of the emitter, okay? Which is fine if you want a really small fountain, but obviously if we want, you know, a larger fountain, then we're going to want that to be as small as possible. So maybe 0.5 or four. Yeah, I'm going to do point seven. So it's a little bigger. And I'm going to bring the lifespan back up now to one because I've amended the, um, the gravity. So the fountain goes up a little bit more. Therefore, I need a longer lifespan to see the particles coming back down. So you see how with a lot of these things, you change one thing, you have to go back and change another because, you know, in this case, I needed to make the lifetime a bit longer of my particles because now it affected the gravity, made the particles go up higher. They were obviously dying up high, so I needed to, them to live a bit longer so that they come back down. 
So, you know, you'll find that when you change things, you have to go back and change other things. But all of these things sort of have an effect on one another. So if you change something, try changing other things to see what effects, you know, they have. Then we have the spread. Spread is just basically, you know, again, how, how, how much do these things disperse or do they stay tightly together? So if we put this to nine, you can see that they sort of form a very, uh, the fountain is now a much tighter um, fountain. In fact, if we made it one, it would just be a single line almost going straight up into the air. Yeah, uh, It was, what, 90 before? So if we put an, an extra zero there, now our fountain pretty much spreads out, covering a wider area. Oh, 180, yes, is the maximum. So let's put this back to uh, 90. That's uh, how I want the fountain to be. The best thing I can suggest to do, because obviously I'm not giving you definitive answers for all of these things, for what they do, but for those that I haven't been able to be as clear on, the best thing I can suggest is just create your own particles and mess around with the numbers and see what certain things do, what effects they have on, what impact they have on the effects. And, you know, you'll come up with something that suits what you need. So in this case, for example, I've got a particular goal in mind. I want to create a fountain. So my speed scale is going to be 0.7. My emission shape is going to be a point. The plate and width of the fountain is fine. The color is fine. The scale is fine. I think I've got it now set to how I want. It's falling. I might put the lifespan up to two, just so we get a little bit more water going down as well. Because as you'll see in a minute, when we put this in place, it's actually going to be up high. So I want the water to, to fall down quite a bit. So I'm now going to save this. And let's just create a couple more. We'll create all the effects first, and then I'll go through how to use the effects um, afterwards. So the next effect I want to make is a fire. And for this, we can use the preset flame. And this is what flame looks like if you use the preset. I'm not going to change it too much. I'm going to um, change the lifetime to 0.6 just so it goes up a bit higher. I'm going to make the size a bit bigger, so it covers slight more ground. Um, I'm actually going to make the fire itself a bit smaller. That's probably fine. Let's try plant five there as well. That'll do something like that. I might just put a another zero on there just so it's a big burning fire. Um, maybe not that many. Let's try 400. Something like that, that's fine. Um, I'm going to change the height now. I think that's probably a bit too high. And then the color is fine. I'm going to leave that. And start scale. I'm actually going to make that point. Five. I'm going to have half of that. Point one. The end. Again, now I've changed that. I'm going to throw another 100 particles in just to beef it out a bit more. So I'm going to save that. And now I'm going to create a copy of this, which I'm going to call smoke. And I'm going to make a, chain, a few changes to this to make it now behave a bit more like smoke. So the first thing is, smoke isn't as fast as fire, so I'm going to make it 0.4. Um, the lifespan is a lot longer, so I possibly even two. So it goes right up, possibly not that much. One. One's probably good enough. Maybe um, 0.8. Just as long as it's a bit taller than the fire. Um, 
color obviously when it starts it should be thick black and as it gets older it goes more white and we could put a slight bit of explosiveness into it because smoke uh, smoke isn't always continuously coming out so maybe 0.5 just to get a bit of maybe slight less than that I don't know I think 0.2 is probably fine it's going to come out continuously but every now and then there'll be a gap and then um I think for this, I'm going to have to start scale the 0.9, so it's much bigger, going to, I think that's probably fine. So, again, just messing around with the options, just creating something that you feel uh, happy with. I might apply a bit of spread. Just because smoke will move around in the air a bit more. So perhaps a bit of that as well, just so it starts to dissipate more as it goes up. Again, it's just playing around with the different numbers and creating the effect that you want. So I'm going to save that now. So then the last one to do is to create one more just to show uh, this is a common one that people want to know how to do. Rain or snow. Snow would be another one. Basically weather effects. So let's do uh, rain. So we'll call this rain. And here you can see, it's quite hard to see on here. So, because um, obviously the uh, the alpha, we could we could up this so we get much more Vibrant rain. So for rain, uh, you could just leave it as it is, but obviously it's going to be quite small on the uh, map. So typically what you might want to do is change the uh, size of the cube. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to set this to 300. Uh, sorry, no, that's the size of the cube. Um, Put that back to 0.5, whatever it was, point, point zero 0.05, okay, uh, it's the emitter shape I want. I'm going to put this to 300 by 300, okay. If you want it to start a bit higher, you can also put a bit of height on the, on the Z, so we could say 20, and it will, just to show you if we go to 100, that sort of puts it higher up in the air, but I'm actually gonna. There's no need to have it that high, unless unless you are. Uh, you obviously need to be mindful of this. If it's possible for your player to go up, you know, um, on the map editor, higher than twenty on here, then obviously you will have to, you know, potentially have this higher than twenty. But twenty for me is fine because I'm not planning to go up that high in the map editor so that's fine but now we've made the, the box bigger the rain is quite uh, spread out if we zoom out you can see the effect it's having so what I might do is just in, increase the amount just so we get a much more of an intense shower uh, the lifetime we can double that maybe just so the rain really falls because obviously we've, we've raised it up so we want it to fall for a lot longer um cube size i'm actually going to make i'm going to halve that i think just so that it doesn't the, the rain doesn't look so tall in fact i might even halve that something like that obviously it needs to be visible in game so i'm not going to make it too small um 
start scale and end scale is, is fine. In fact, you could start at 0.5. Because obviously rain, as it falls, will, gravity will make the droplets bigger. But uh, we'll leave it as a uniform size. Could put some randomness in there just so the raindrops have a bit of variety in them. Obviously we want the rain to fall. We could change the speed at which it falls. But I think, you know, rain falls quite fast, so we could have two. So it's like an intense shower. So now we've created our four effects. We've got a fountain effect, smoke effect, fire effect, and rain. Let's take a look at how to put these into, again. So starting off with the fountain. If we go to our map editor, I've pre-created this fountain area here. And this uh, plinth in the middle has an attachment on it. If we take a look in the in the effects in the um, voxel editor, I have an attachment of this Justin model that I made, which is just uh, Justin in a sort of fountain pose, typical sort of uh, cherub type pose that you get in sort of estate homes and things. Um, looking up and we'll have him spitting out the water. So what we want to do is we want to create an attach point in the model for the statue. So in with the statue in the voxel editor, we're going to create, we're going to place an attach point where we want the fountain to come out from. So I'm going to click there, give your attach point a name. I'll just call it spout. Okay. And then what you want to do is just like you do when you're attaching a model to another model, you're going to scroll down to where the attachments are, find your attach point, in this case spout, click the preview button, and instead of previewing an object, we're going to go down to where it says effect, and we're going to select fountain, and we, in this case we do want to automatically attach this effect in game, and we're going to click OK, and now we can see in the, in the uh, voxel editor, that our effect has been attached. And this is kind of what it's going to look like in game. So looking pretty good. I'm going to make a couple of changes. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the um, attach point box so I can just see the effect. So I can see it's coming out the wrong part of the mouth. So I'm just going to go to the settings for the attach point and just use our mouse wheel, scrolling the mouse wheel to make some minute adjustments to the position of the attach point so I can get the water looking like it's coming out of his mouth properly and that's all looking good now let's say we wanted to um, turn the fountain on at a later stage we don't want it to start on we want it to be turned on so we'll save the model because but this is a change we won't make in the model we need to go back to our fountain and we need to make sure we turn this off and save the effect. So we've added the effect, but it starts with the emitter off. So in game, we're not going to see the fountain because it starts off, okay? So. Let's now take a look at the fire. Okay, so there's our stand, which we'll use for our fire. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an attach point in the middle which we'll call fire. And we'll create an attach point right next to it, which we'll call smoke. So then we'll go to the model properties. We'll scroll down to the attach points. We'll find fire first. Doesn't matter which order you do them in, but I'm going to do them in the order of fire and then smoke. Make sure we're on the attach point for fire. Click the preview button. Drop this down. Select fire. Automatically attach. OK. There's our fire effect. So I'm going to make some adjustments. So I'm going to turn off the attach point viewer, move the fire in a bit and more into the stand. We can also mess around with the scale. So just make it 0.9 so it's just a little smaller. So it fits inside there a bit better. I'll do. That'll be perfect. And then we drop this smoke one down. Preview. Smoke. 
again automatically attach okay and then what we're going to do is obviously scale the smoke one down let's say 0.8 And then we're going to position the smoke so that it's a bit higher than the fire. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's really just to demonstrate. So there we go. So we've kind of got a fire that's got a bit of smoke as well. So if we save that, we can then put that into our map as well. So we go to stand. Now what's interesting about effects as opposed to models is you can see them in the editor. You can see the attached effects in the editor. So that's interesting. So let's put uh, two of those on either side of our water feature. So Let's go into the um, game and let's take a look at our effects. So here we are in the game. So here's our two torches with their fire and smoke effects. Obviously, you know, you could make the smoke a bit bigger. It is uh, not going up as high as I thought it was going to go. But again, that's just adjusting the lifespan of the particles and everything like that. And obviously at the moment you can see our statue, but the fountain isn't on because we uh, we attached the effect, but we turned the emitter off in its settings. So let's now start to talk about how you can script effects. So there's two ways of having an effect in your game. You can attach it, which is what we've done with the fire and the smoke and already, and also done that with the fountain. But we can also add it later on via a script, but we can also enable and disable effects via a script. So with our fountain, we want to be able to enable it. So um, let me just check where I start. I start at minus one, two. So where is that on the map? So that's there. So let's say just here we have a... Uh, character enters tile and we'll put a script uh, in there and I'll explain this so first thing we need to do because we're dealing with an attachment okay we need to give this plinth an ID so I'm just going to call this plinth1 okay so in our script for our on enters tile we need to, to to grab the attachments of the plinth so let's say attach one equals entity plinth one dot attachment and then we need the name of the attachment upon which the statue is connected to so in my case that's point a Okay, so that's the attach. That's the attachment on plinth where the statue is attached. So attach one is now going to basically equal the statue model. Okay, but we need the fountain, so we then need attach two equals dollar attach one, which is the statue dot attachment. And remember how we put an attachment on the statue called spout, which is where his mouth is, and that's where the water comes out. So. Attach to is now a reference to the effect. In other words, the fountain effect. It's not uh, attachment this time. It's effect. Okay? So just be aware of that. When you're then getting an effect based off of an attachment, it's not attachment, it's effect. So we want the effect that's attached via spout. Okay? So now we can do enable effect dollar attach. To. So that's how you would enable effect if it's an attachment. It's a fair bit more complicated than just enabling an effect that you add, which we'll get to in a minute when we talk about rain. But this, you can see this, it's perfectly doable with attachments as well. But you just have to grab each of the attachments first 
and then enable the effect that you want. So let's play. So now as soon as we walk onto this tile here, the fountain should come on, and there we go. So now we have both our fire going, and our fountain is going as well. And obviously you could put water in this area so it looks a bit more realistic for a fountain, but just to give you an idea for this video. Okay, so just so I don't completely uh, kill my computer, I'm going to get rid of these and we'll take a look at the rain. So obviously you do have to be careful with particle effects because they obviously do take up a lot of um, resources. Because basically you're basically throwing out a lot of, you know, entities, particles, if you will, all in, all in one. So if you stack them up, then it does, obviously, it all adds up to the processing that you have to do. So I'm going to get rid of the fountain and the fire so we can go over the rain. So let's take a look at how we, another way that we could, because we could attach the rain to a tile. We could, you know, for example, we could go into the voxel editor and we could open up this grass tile and we could put an attachment on it and link it to the rain. The problem is every grass tile now would have rain attached to it. That basically would cripple the uh, computer. What we just want is we just want the rain to go probably into the middle, maybe this tile here. If we attach it to that tile, then, you know, we've, we've made it sort of 300 by 300. We can make it maybe a bit bigger if we need to. But we'll see how much of the map this covers if we add it to this tile here. So what you want to do is you're going to want to grab the coordinates for where you wish to add the effect to. So in this case, I'm going to right click and copy the coordinates of this central tile here, this one here. Okay. Now I want this to happen at startup. So I'm going to go to my startup script just here, and I'm going to look for the add effect function. We'll drag that in. We want to add rain and paste in our coordinates. And if you want to be able to disable the rain or enable it if it starts off, i.e. if the emitter is off, okay, you want to give it an ID. So I'm going to call this rain1 so that later on in my game, I can turn this on or off, okay? To show that, I'm actually going to go into the uh, effects editor, load up rain, and I'm going to start with it off. So once again, it will add, but we won't see it because um, we'll need to script it to come on, okay? So what we'll do is, again, when we walk onto this tile, all we need to do is enable effect and pass in rain1 because we've given it that name when we when we added it, okay? So it's, a much, it's much easier to turn on an effect that you've added via the add effect command than it is to enable an effect that's attached because you then have to grab all the attachments to get the reference to the effect in order to be able to enable it. Whereas if you add it via a script, you can give it an ID and then you can just enable an effect by, the, by its ID. So this way is a lot easier, but I'm showing you both just so that you can pick the one that fits your um, requirements. So let's try this out now. So as soon as we load, we're not going to notice anything because it's going to add the effect. But we don't see anything until we move on to this tile. And now it's going to start raining and you can see the rain is coming down. Okay? And if I move forward, you can see it's, it's covering a fairly decent. In fact, it is covering all of the map. But obviously this map's quite small. So if your map was bigger than this, then obviously you would need to adjust the box size, the emitter size, to, to cover a wider area, okay? And obviously the bigger you make the box, you're probably going to need to introduce more particles because obviously the bigger the box, but keeping the same amount of particles, they'll be spread out more. So if you want the rain to be, you know, uh, torrential like this, then you'll need to obviously um, complement the growing size of the box with the amount of particles, right? So as you grow the size of the box, you also need to increase the amount of uh, particles. But again, just be careful. The more particles you have, the more effect it's going to have on the processor. So 
or on the, or at the very least the performance of the game, okay? Whether it's the processor or not, but it's going to have an effect on the frames of the game. So, um, and then obviously, you know, let's say we wanted to go into a building. What you would have is a script that in this case would then disable effect rain one. And then as soon as we've gone into a building, that means it's not raining inside. So you don't see the rain coming into a building, for example. And then as soon as you step outside again, you would have a script that re-enables rain one again. So that's how you do rain for interiors as well. So if you don't, you don't want to see the rain like it is now going into your building, um, make it so that as soon as you step into your building, you disable a map-wide effect. And then when you step outside again, you re-enable the map-wide effect, okay? So I think that brings us to the end of the effects uh, video. I hope it's been um, informative and useful, and I hope you've been able to get a better grasp of the effects editor and the various different options it has. Sorry, I couldn't explain all of the uh, parameters. Obviously, as more documentation comes out, I might revisit this topic and go over the effects editor again, explaining the things that I wasn't able to cover. But for the most part, I would say that, you know, the best thing to do with a particle effect editor is just play around with it. Just create different particle effects, see what the different sliders and numbers do, and just create something that fits, you know, what it, ha what it is you have in your mind's eye. So um, sometimes the best effect, the par best particle effects come about from just playing around with it and going, oh, that's quite a nice effect, and just using that, or letting that inspire what you create. So sometimes having a preset idea of what you want to create first before you use the particle effect editor isn't necessarily always the best thing to do. Sometimes it's just a case of playing around and seeing what the different sliders do and things that you start to get an effect that you like the look of and that might either be the particle you use or it might at the very least inspire you to then create the end result of that that you're looking for. But uh, anyway, as I say, hopefully this video has helped explain the effect editor and how to use the effects, how to add them into your game via attachments and scripts. If you have any questions on either the effect editor or using the effects, uh, of course, feel free to reach out on the Discord. But for now, that'll wrap up this video. Thanks for watching.